Welcome back. For this Flatirons tuning tech tip, what we wanted to do is to kind of take a, a deeper look at methods of tuning, uh, ways that you get your car tuned. Primarily, what we wanted to look at is you know, e-tunes or email tunes, street tunes, and dyno tunes. They're all three different processes to get to the same result, which is to change the tune on your car or improve the tune on your car. But what, what has brought this up is we've had a lot of questions of late, uh, primarily revolving around e-tunes versus dyno tunes. But um, you know, we've got so many questions of it, it, it feels like it's something that there, it, it would be helpful to have a little bit more information, maybe a better understanding out there, as far as what the differences are, what are the pros and cons of these, each different process. And, and then give that information to you so that you have you know, the, the best ability to make the choice, the right choice for your car and your project. And what I will tell you is in regards to tuning, we do not tune customer cars. So really when it comes to getting a car tuned, we are just like you. We have, have worked with a number of tuners over the years, a number of shops. Um, every, all of our race cars have been on the dyno more times than I can count. We've all had our personal cars tuned as well. And in addition to that, both Scotty and myself have been through the EFI University 101 class to give us more of an idea of what's going on when you're tuning the car, the process involved, and uh, you know, just kind of how to, how to get to a good result to make sure you have a good tune on the car. And so that's what we want to kind of distill down and look at each of these different processes, you know, the e-tunes, the street tunes, the dyno tunes, so you can under, have a good understanding of what the differences are, what are the pros and cons, so that you can make the right choice. And just in a very basic sense, you know, when we're talking about a tune, what, what we're talking about here is taking your, the information and, and the running parameters on your stock ECU and the tuner would go in and, and then change something you know, at a very simple level, something like timing, fueling, possibly scaling sensors, and overwrite the data on the ECU and put in new information, new parameters, so that your car will now you know, run better, make more power, or run properly with the modifications that you put on your car. And that is done, you know, you make some changes, you see if you're going down the right path or not, you know, possibly change more things, adjust, and, and you do that multiple times, or the tuner would do that multiple times until at the end, you have a, a properly running car for, for everything that you're doing, being it street driving or track driving, whatnot. And e-tuning, street tuning, and dyno tuning are just three different processes to get to that end result. So what we wanted to do is to dive into what are those differences? What are the differences between each method? So to start with, we're going to look at e-tuning. Okay, so when we're talking about an e-tune, here's the process that we're talking about. Um, to, to work with an e-tuner, basically all you have to have access to is email and maybe the internet. And they will send you a map. You have to have a way to get that map onto your car, so call it a COM access port. So they'll send you a map, you put it on your access port, you load that onto your car. They will generally give you some, some telemetry that they want to collect, you know, look at various different sensors, and ignition advanced multiplier, timing, uh, what, what have you. They will give you that list and then conditions that they want you to go out there and collect those pieces of data under, say, you know, second, third gear pole, you know, maybe on a flat road going up a hill, whatnot. So you get the first map, you load it on your car, you go out and you collect data, then you come back, you pull that data off your laptop or your access port, you send it to the tuner. They will evaluate that data, compare it to, you know, what the initial map that they sent uh, for you was. They will make some changes, send you another map, you load that onto your car, go out there, collect data again, and send them da the data back. So you go through these iterations, and through that process of you know of you collecting, you know, data, data logging, and then refining the map, then that's how you arrive at the final tune. Generally speaking, you're probably going to look at something like five to seven, maybe even ten different iterations of of tuning of tunes to arrive at your final tune. So that's, that's basically the process that you go through to get the tune. Now, so there, there's certainly some positives to e-tunes. One, one of the biggest is cost. Uh, because the overhead for an e-tuner is very low compared to you know, a shop that has a dyno, you know, their cost for a tune is much less. Um, the, another thing is availability. So again, all you have, have to have, all you need to use an e-tuner is basically have email and have access to the internet. Um, so, you know, it doesn't matter where you are, you know, if you're six hours away from an all-wheel drive dyno, you don't have to necessarily drive six hours to get the car tuned. If you can work remotely with the tuner, just where you are, you just have to go out there and collect the data. So pretty much no matter where you are, you can work with an e-tuner. 
So that's a big advantage. And kind of related to that, if you have a, you know kind of a, a unique car or there's a tuner that really specializes in your car with a certain modification, say like you know a BRZ with a certain turbo kit on it, say, um, and there's a tuner that specializes in that and they do e-tunes, then if you have that car and you want to work with that tuner, it doesn't matter if you're 2,000 miles away, you know, you just have to have access to email and whatnot, and you can work with that tuner, for instance. So, so there's some definite pluses to it, but there's definitely some things to keep in mind with an e-tune as well. The, the first is just, again, based on the process, based on the fact that you're going to get a map, you're going to have to put it on the car, collect data, send it back, and then just do that iteration over and over again. It's not going to be a, a quick process. You know, it's going to take at least a few days, if not maybe a week or two. Because again, you're going to have to go out there and collect data a handful of times and go back and forth in each iteration to make sure that you're moving in the right direction. Kind of related to that is that you know because the tuner is not present. You know, I would say that you know if you take a car to a shop to be tuned, any good tuner will, will at a minimum give a car a good look over. If not, actually do some basic testing, maybe even a smoke test to make sure that the car is in perfect mechanical condition before they even start tuning. And the reason for that is that, uh, you know, if, if there is an issue present, a vacuum leak, what have you, and they start trying to tune the car, one, that could exacerbate, you know, some kind of error that you have or problem that you have and cause damage. Um, it can also make the tune so that, you know, the, the tune is going to behave inconsistently, or if you have a problem like, say, a vacuum leak, and you're tuned with a vacuum leak, then you find that and fix it, well, now the tune might not be appropriate because now all of your scaling is off because you were tuned with a vacuum leak that's now no longer present. So they want to make sure that the car is mechanically perfect before they start making any changes. But with an e-tuner, they're not present. So, so you as the car owner, the person that's collecting the data, now that's your responsibility to make sure that the car is 100% perfect before you start down that process. Because the tune can only be good as the data that you're passing to the tuner. So, so the, the first thing to keep in mind with that is, is the condition of the car. Make sure that it's, it is as mechanically perfect and mechanically sound as possible because it, it really needs to be to have a good result. If you, if, and so that the tuner is not going to be there to help find things or, or to help you sort that out. That, that's going to be on your shoulders. But related to that too is the tune can only be as good, again, as the data collected. So consistency comes into play. You know, today here, it's, it's Colorado, it's 25 degrees, and it's snowing. Three days from now, it could be 60, 70 degrees. If you're collecting data today, and then on a 70 degree day, how comparable are those numbers because of the vast change in atmospheric conditions? You know, and again, with an e-tune, because it's going to be a process over time, that's, that's something to keep in mind because it might look like, you know, things are improving, but is it because of the changes that the tuner made, or is it because of changes in the atmospheric conditions? You have to have you know some way to kind of distill that down. To even go further with that, you know, do you have the ability to get AFR readings? Do you have a wideband or not? Do you have some way to measure power? Do you have you know uh, some kind of like an app on your phone or you know I guess uh, the Com Access Board has a function where it will do something like that. You have to have some way to measure the effectiveness of the changes that are being made. So with an e-tuner. That's something that you, as, as the customer, would you know, ideally would want to have or have access to and whatnot. Because again, the tune can only be good as good as the data that you're providing, and you want to have some ability to measure the changes that are made. You know, are are you making more power? If so, where and how? And, and kind of again related to that and related to you know conditions. You know, where are you collecting your data? You know, if you're out there. On, a, on the same stretch of road every single time in the same conditions, that would be ideal. But if you're just driving around, you know, one time you're doing a pull and it's going uphill, the next one is downhill, you know, maybe one's around a corner. All of those variables change the data, give, you, give it a little bit, make it a little bit less clear as, as far as whether the changes that the tuner is making are really giving you the result that you want and working the proper way and, and are, are safe. So, you know, consistency in data and, and, and types of data. You know, do you have access to that and can you send that back? Those are all pieces of the puzzle that will determine whether or, or how effective that eTunes is going to be. And the last point that I'll say about eTunes would be safety. Because, you know, since you are not in a controlled environment, when you're collecting this data, you're out there on a street with traffic, with cars, that's something to be aware of too. There's certainly 
some degree of risk involved if, if you're trying to do a third gear pull, second gear pull, what have you, on an, on an open road. So that's a risk that you, as, as, as the, the person that owns the car that's getting tuned, is kind of undertaking because you have to do that to collect that kind of data. Um, you know, and just as a footnote to that, related to that, is if there is something wrong with the tune, if something goes out of whack, um, you're in a live environment and you are the one that is driving as well as trying to record this data. Um, and if something goes wrong, it is now your responsibility to, you know, detect that hopefully as early as possible and, you know, back out of the throttle, what have you, to keep yourself safe and to keep the car safe. So those are those are not things to be just taken lightly necessarily. It's definitely something that you want to, you know, consider going in. So those are those are you know more or less the key things to look at or to, to think about with an e unit. Is that going to fit with the goals that you that you have? Is it going to fit the time frame that you have? Uh, do you have the ability to data log, etc., and to get the result that you want? So now we're going to look at street tuning. So with street tuning, what is the method that we're talking about here? Basically, I guess the simplest way to explain it would be think about it with an e-tune, but the tuner is present with the car, in the car, as you're going out to well, either make changes and collect data. So there's, there's some obvious advantages. The biggest one, of course, is the tuner is now present. So you know, especially if the tuner has a shop, um, the tuner can set eyes on the car, can go through the car, can maybe you know, do some tests to make sure that the car is 100% mechanically sound before you go down the road of tuning the car. So that's a huge advantage. The other big advantage is speed. So now the tuner, because they're present, they're seeing the data in real time, and so they're making changes and then you know, collecting more data. So it's something where you know, instead of it taking possibly multiple days, if not even a week or two, to get a tune done, it's something that could take a few hours to maybe a day or two to get your final tune result. Um, the other advantage too is because now since you're you know, maybe going to the tuner shop, hopefully they have some more of these tools to collect, you know, maybe they have a wide band, hopefully they have a wide band, um, some way to measure power, so that you can, so that the data that you are collecting will, will give them more information and make them better able to make the proper, uh, to make a good tune. Um, the other advantage that's worth mentioning, and it, this is usually what comes up when people talk about street tuning, is that you're doing it in a real world environment. You're now you're not trying to simulate road conditions, you are on the road, so they are actual road conditions. Um, you know, th that can certainly be a plus. Um, I would say the biggest advantage of that would be if it was in a kind of contained environment at a racetrack. You know, if the tuner is trackside sending you out, you turn a couple laps, come back, look at data, make some changes, that would be, that would be where that would be the most applicable because you're, you're turning laps on the same track, same day, collecting data each time, in that you know same area, and so that really gives that would give the tuner the best advantage to be able to use real world conditions to give you a more effective map on the street. I would say that the significance of that goes down significantly because there's just so much more variables at play on the street. Um, and really, that would be you know that would be one of the, the downsides, the things to consider with the street tune. If you're going to be collecting this data, but you're still on a live road. You know, safety. Safety is a big one. You know, if you're going to try and do second gear pulls, third gear pulls, you know, safety is, is, is significant. I'd say it's a decision not to be taken lightly. You know, it, it, that, that's really all that can be said about it. It's, it's still risk involved. And that's where, like, if you can do it at a track or something, it's going to increase your consistency. And, and safety is not nearly as, as much of a problem because you're on a closed track. Um, Variable conditions are still at play with a street tune or even a track tune. Um, again, if there's one thing you take away from this, this video is the tune can only be as good as the data collected. So hopefully in, in the case of a street tune, they have more tools to collect more accurate data than you might have just as yourself. But if you're, especially if you're going out there on the street, there's still tons and tons of variables at play. You know, road conditions, um, temperature, atmospheric conditions. Um, and just just traffic, you know, uphill, downhill, um, you know, all of those all of those variables. You know, is, is they is the conditions kind of distort the data that reduces the tuner's ability to make an effective tune. So, those are really the things to keep in mind with the street tune. So now let's talk about dyno tune. Okay, so now we have arrived at dyno tune. So what is that process? Well. 
simply, you, you would bring your car to a dining tuning facility. Uh, as we've said, a good, good shop will give the car a good look over, maybe even smoke test the car. Once they're sure that the car is mechanically sound, they will put it on the dyno and start tuning the car. So if there's, if there's a big advantage to dyno tuning, it is that you're putting the car on a dyno, which is a tool whose job it is to measure the output of the car, the, the torque and the horsepower, and also that gives the tuner control of, you know, basically the conditions that the car is running on. So that every single time that you're uh, basically doing a pull with the car, it's going to be exactly the same conditions. So with that repeatability, that gives the tuner a very quick ability to see whether their changes are working or not and, and make changes and then, then assess them again. So it, it's, the most, it's the best way to get consistent data. And because it, it is so consistent, that's where you know, the time to tune the car can go down you know, even more. So something where it might just take a couple of hours, you know, call it at a worst case, maybe a full day to tune the car. Um, versus multiple days or, or even weeks. Um, the other thing that's worth mentioning is, is again, so not only does the dyno measure the output of the car, but it gives the tuner controllable, control over the conditions. So, you know, a good dyno, a load-based dyno, the tuner can actually control the load and the duration of the pull that, that the car is going through every single time. And so a good tuner, that actually will allow them to put the car into almost a worst-case scenario. You know, yes, you know, on a dyno, the car is not driving at the street. You know, when you're going 100 miles an hour on the dyno, you're only getting the, the wind over the radiator and over the intercooler, say, that the fans can supply. So maybe it's, say, 40, call it 60 miles an hour of wind. Well, a good tuner can actually use that to their advantage because if you have, you know, at that speed, you know, half the airflow that you would actually see in the real world, but the car still is reliable, still makes power, and it doesn't overheat, you know, that is going to be a very reliable tune once you actually put it in those real world conditions that are actually better, more favorable even, than what you're seeing on the dyno. So if you can get good results and good reliability on the dyno in a worst case scenario, then that's where the car will then behave even at, you know, as it's stressed under, under peak use in, in the real world because, you know, a good, dyno, good tuner can use that to their advantage so that the real world is actually a better set of conditions more favorable set of conditions than maybe even on the dyno. So that, that, is, that in, in short is where the dyno is an advantage. It's controllable conditions, consistency of data, and you can actually use that, a good tuner can actually use that to their advantage so that your in tune is going to be even better and more reliable than, than where, where those conditions are variable. But there are still some downsides. So the biggest one is cost. Dynos are expensive tools, and because of that, you know, a dyno tune is going to cost significantly more than either of these other methods that we've talked about. There's also availability. Um, you know, all-wheel drive dynos are still not that prevalent out there in many parts of the country. And, you know, it would not be uncommon where, you know, you would have to drive your car or have it towed a couple hundred miles to hundreds of miles just to get onto a dyno. So that's where, you know, the other two options come into play. And that's where, you know, hopefully that, that's the goal of this video is to give you an, a good idea of, of each process and make the decision. Is it worth trying to go 600 miles to get on a dyno? Or is, would it be a better idea to try one of these other options and, and still get a good result? You know, and, it, and it's all going to come down to process. Um, the other thing that I will say here at the end is, well, relative to dyno tuning, even if a shop has a dyno, that does not mean that they're going to be able to or be proficient at tuning your car. Um, and really, with, with all of these tuners, the final note that I would say is before you pick a tuner, you know, pick certain method that you want to work with. You know, that's a good start. But then once you kind of have picked the tuner that you want to work with, which would, with whatever method, you know, street tuning, e-tuning, or dyno tuning, then really spend some time and figure out, you know, what that, what that tuner's specialty is, how long they've been in business, what kind of cars they specialize in. Have they tuned your car before? Have they tuned many of your cars before? And, and what, what is the, the general feedback from their customers as far as you know, their, their ability to tune the car and that sort of thing? You know, there, there's a lot going on when you tune a car. A lot can go wrong. It, it doesn't usually, but it can. So once you've kind of figured out the direction that you want to go, then take a step back and, and really, you know, do your, do your due diligence on that tuner and, and decide, like, is this really the person that I want to work with or do I want to maybe look at a different option and go with somebody else? Make sure that you feel comfortable with the shop or the tuner 
and their experience before you put your car in their hands, whatever method you decide to go with. Um, if, you, if you have all this information and you, you do your, a good research on the tuner and you're, you feel good about it, that is what is going to hopefully ensure that you have a good end result, get, get a good tune on your car, uh, and hopefully have a, a good result with your project. So thanks very much for watching. Um, you know, hopefully this, this is helpful. Hopefully this answers some questions that you had. Um, we really do appreciate your support. Um, if this video was good, uh, good for you, please drop a like and stay tuned for more flat tuning tech tips.